Hi, today I'm going to talk about a step-by-step -step process for designing a game box insert using Gloomhaven as my example. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And my project for today is a little bit different because I'm really going to focus on my thought process for creating a design. And the design is an insert, so it's about how do you organize the pieces of a game to fit into the space of the original game box. I'm using Gloomhaven because it's a very complicated game with a lot of parts. If my process works for Gloomhaven, it'll work for simpler games as well. So why would you do this? Now, you can always buy an insert for your favorite game. For example, Broken Token makes a really wonderful insert for Gloomhaven. And when you take into account the amount of time that you're going to put into this and the materials, you're not going to save money by making your own. But maybe you want to design it and sell it to other people. That's a possibility. Or maybe, like me, you just like to design things that fit your own particular needs. And, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this process. So step one is always play the game, and play the game a lot. Because until you do that, you don't really know how you use the pieces and how you want to store them. So for example, based on my experience, I knew I wanted a, a separate token box that I could have handy while I'm playing. And I even have a separate little token box inside of it for some uh, highly used small tokens. I knew I wanted a separate card box. And this is separated into the active cards and into the um, reserve cards that will come into the game later. And you need to keep those separated and organized. One thing that isn't here are the large map tiles which you put together to make the board because we've decided to store those alphabetically in a large accordion file and that just works better for us so I really didn't need to put it in my insert. Does the process work? Well everything fits into the insert and the insert fits into the box so that means technically it works but I also learned uh, like you do every time you make something about some refinements that I would make on the second iteration and I'll talk about those as well. The first step is to figure out how much space you have to work with. I'm going to keep some of the boxes that came with the game, and that leaves me enough for two layers next to the boxes and one layer on top, each of them being about two and a half inches deep. The next step is to organize the items that will go in it. These are the map tiles that I said we put in this alphabetical folder. It makes it faster to put the game board together. So I don't need space for those, but I have a lot of different tokens and stands. I have different sizes of cards, minis and standard size, and even uh, some unusual sizes. And then I have these tile overlays for the board. I also have these large format pieces that will lay in the top of the box. The most complicated part of the insert are the monsters where I have cards and standees and different volumes for each, so that's going to be complicated. And I have these little boxes that the miniatures came in. I want room for those as well. The next step is to do a high-level plan for the three different layers. I'm going to estimate that the monsters are taking about two-thirds of the bottom layer, and I'm going to reserve the rest of that space for the tokens. So that's giving me um, th these dimensions to work with for storing the tokens in the bottom layer. I'm going to put the cards mostly in the second layer, and I'm going to plan on putting all of them there, at least at this stage. That was my plan. And the tile overlays are going to go into the first inch and a quarter of the top layer, and I'm going to reserve the last inch and a quarter for these large format pieces. In my next step, I'm going to break down these large groups into subgroups that I want to actually keep separate in the insert. So I separate my tokens into the different groups that I want to keep in separate partitions, and I write each of those down. And I do this for all the other parts. I know I want an active set of cards versus a reserved set of cards. I break them down into subgroups from there. And I do the same thing for the tiles. I want to keep the doors separate from the traps and the treasure and altar and the different sizes of tiles, single, double, and triple. Then I figure out what's the minimum amount of space I need to dedicate to each of these subgroups. 
For something like tokens, I measure them by volume. I actually use this shot glass and put them in to see how many cubic inches I have of each of the different types of tokens I've decided I want to keep separate. And I record that for each of the subgroups. Cards, on the other hand, have actual dimensions. And I'm going to use the standard card size for my card box. And I figure out well, how many inches or how much depth I need to store each of the subgroups based on the maximum number of cards that are going to be in that space at any given time. I also decided at this point that I'd have some extra space in the top, so I moved the attack modifier cards and the monster stack cards into the top layer, and then I measured the dimensions required for all of the overlay tiles. Step six is where I do a rough layout of each of the layers. I use Adobe Illustrator for my drawings, and I created a layer for each in the drawing for each layer in the box, and I put in the name and I put in the depth of that particular layer. My general approach was to create one of these green boxes for each of my subgroups. I'd put in the dimensions of the footprint of that subgroup, and then I could just move that around inside the drawing and see where it fit or didn't fit. In the case of the monsters, there's so many partitions, I actually also put in lines to represent the dividers because they're going to take up significant space in that box. For the rest of them, I'd just use these green areas and then I would use the blue outline to define the boxes within the box or in some cases the partitions between different sections. When I did this for the middle layer, I found out I had plenty of room available for the character boxes and in fact some extra space here. For the card box, I kept it separated between active and reserve and in each case I have enough space for the city and road events, the items, and an overflow space. In the top layer, I had room for those cards I moved over, the monster stats, the attack modifiers, all of the overlay tiles, and I still had room left to put in the uh, health and experience dials that I thought would be in the top layer. At this point I've added one of my favorite cartoons of a complex process where the middle step is then a miracle occurs. And I put this in because that's a little bit how it feels at this stage, because now you have to actually draw the components. And this is where you make it three-dimensional. These are samples of my Illustrator drawing. They're all put together with the tab and groove uh, method, the boxes. Partitions are held in place with slots on the side where tabs and the partitions slip in. The height of every piece is uh, represented at this point. In the card box, for example, there's also these rails with slots where tabs for the dividers slide in. I have a lot of tips and tricks for how to do this kind of drawing, and I have a video dedicated to that. And I'll put a link in at the end of this video so you can check it out if you're interested. The Illustrator drawing can be used to drive the laser cutter through a piece of software, in this case called RD Works. Here it is cutting one of the pieces. I'm using 332nds birch plywood. That's very unusual plywood. I bought it from an aircraft supply company. I glued together the insert and I used these granite samples to help uh, hold it together while the glue is drying. And here's the finished monster box. I tried to leave more space for about 10 of the different monsters, but I still need to adjust some of the spacing here to get everything to fit better. I used a layered construction method on the small status token box. I like how that works. And some of these tokens aren't fitting so great, but we don't actually use these tokens. We use, the, uh, we use dice for our damage and we use these nice metal money tokens from Charterstone for our money and they fit into the box perfectly. So the small token box goes in the larger token box and it goes inside of the first layer and it fits into the box just as it should. For the card box, um, you can see here that the small format cards can sit on end as long as they can lean back or there's plenty of room for them to sit on the side. And I put in a couple extra dividers uh, so that we could keep road and city events separate. As the drawing indicated, there is some extra space available next to the character boxes. On the top level, I've made the center dividers lower than the edges, so there's room for the big things to fit in the top. 
I should have made that even lower. I'm going to cut those down next time. Everything fits in great except the board, and the board is wider than the top layer is. And to account for that, I'm going to need to put some cutouts in the sides that let the board fit down in better. So there's a couple of changes I know I need to make, but in general, given the complexity of this, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how well it turned out the first time through. I wouldn't recommend starting with something like Gloomhaven, but it is a good test of the process. When I do the revisions, this drawing will be available on my website, and I have a lot of other great projects for gaming and gamers. So if you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.